Today on The Riff, Jeremy and Justin sit down and talk about the theology of heaven. What is heaven? How does what we believe about there and then impact our here and now? It takes about nine minutes for them to get to the subject because they talk about Chuck E. Cheese, Republic, and skating rinks up top. I'm just glad they hit the important stuff first. We hope today is helpful. Thanks for listening. Hello, Riff listeners. Welcome to another episode of The Riff. We are thrilled that you would join us, whether you are watching, whether you are listening, uh, whether someone is cap taking captive your ears and making you listen to this. You said we. Uh, you didn't talk to me about that. No, I know. I, like, I don't. No. It's kind of like just. No, I was talking about Leanne and I. Oh, okay. Leanne yeah, great. But, but great. what do you no. think about it? I'm also in that boat. So luckily, you said we. Ah, I just we well. hadn't talked about it. So when you said it, I was like, wow, I don't remember that conversation. I, but I'm also excited they're here. You know what happens when you assume? What, you burn bridges. Oh, okay. And yeah, I don't no. want to do that with you. <laughs> no, you so. have it. You have it. You have it. Okay, good. Well, uh, and I'd be remiss. If I didn't say happy new year coming up to everybody, mm -hmm. yes. I hope it's a I hope it's a great uh, week for you. Now, they say it's not true in our it's not true. It's not true at North Point, but they okay. say that th those of you who are working this week, they say you don't get a lot of work done. Really? Yeah. That's Does weird. that surprise you? That is surprising. <laughs> yeah. 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 I will be here every day. Yeah. Um so but I'll be around if you don't see me. Yeah, but no, be, absolutely. Yeah, no, Rural no, no, no. remote work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> very yeah, good. Great. Very, very available. But hey, happy new year. Um, again, if you're uh, uh, maybe unfamiliar, this weekend we have a different uh, schedule. Uh, we we do assume that uh, this is going to be a unique weekend. People are in holiday mode. People celebrate the new years. We are having one service at two of our campuses. That's so right. Springfield, Nixa, 1030 on Sunday. Um, the first. So no service on New Year's Eve. And again, after the holiday break, we'll have we'll be back up with our set up teardown campuses. So a week from now we'll go back to Saturday, Sunday, Springfield Nixa and all four campuses, regular scheduled times. But this weekend, one service, ten thirty, and it's gonna That's be, gonna be, oh, it's gonna be the, great. The can kids, I say it? Yeah. It'll be the best service of twenty twenty three. So are you serious? so far. So far. Really? Yeah. That's absolutely. what your thoughts absolutely bold. Yeah. I like yeah, it though. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Okay. I'm All excited. Right. You Good. don't want to miss it. Oh, no, no, I won't. You would want to cancel plans. Oh, for sure. If you need to. Oh, so. I just did. That's good. Yeah. Um, uh, so, hey, anyway, we're, we're excited about that. We're excited about this new year. I'm very excited about what, what we're going to see this next year. We're going to see this next year, we're going to see a brand new uh, campus opened in Nixa. And uh, they're working feverishly, not with fevers, but meaning they're working hard. Oh. Uh, they stay home if they got the fever, right? So I don't joke about that. I noticed halfway through that sentence, I thought That's I better right. clarify. They only work if they're healthy, but when they are healthy, they work feverishly to be able to provide uh, our opening. We're hoping by fall of this next year. So we're excited mm -hmm. about that. Uh, we're excited. We're looking. I'll just say this: we're looking for opportunities to you lease. You're gonna say it to lease a well, building uh -huh. in the Republic area. We are for, thankful for the campus, not just you and I. Like we'll do that as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. For you and I, we're taking our friendship <laughs> to the next level. We're gonna. <laughs> We're gonna have we're gonna we're gonna go into business together. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna open a skating it's rink. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> no, that's not really well, here's that's a dream of yours. I do. Like you joke about it, but you've brought it up probably that. seven times in the last year. Yeah. So. I, I believe I believe in skating. I think you would be a phenomenal general manager of a skating rink. Can you imagine? That might that? be the nicest thing well, someone has uh, ever no, said to me. Year. I can't yeah. imagine that. As a matter I, of fact, if you take me back to a fourth grade project of what might happen if things go right, Jeremy. You might have heard me talk about <laughs> skating, managing, but that's cool. Um, but we are, oh, I forgot we were going to talk about, we are looking to, to find a place to lease for our Republic campus. Right. Now, here's kind of a multi-site. And again, the, the point of the riff, if you're like, I'm looking for something different from this, you might got the wrong podcast. Uh, this is a target audience for our riff listeners. Uh, it is for those who are on this journey. So we're going to give some, some things that might be uh, inside uh, North Point related. Um, one of the ways we look at multi-site is we launch with a setup teardown vibe. It's a low cost, low commitment, see what kind of uh, impact influence is needed in an area. Um, and then if that By goes commitment, well, you mean overhead, not commitment to like low commitment as in we're not going to take X amount of 
resources and push into this. Well, piece. I mean, we, we it are, might mean to say, hey, is there a need there? Right. And so, so like even well, let's explain the the pop up. The pop up was yes. an example of that in Republic. Yes, low commitment, meaning we're committed to figuring it out. Right? We're, commi- we're committed. We're committed. When yeah. we are there, we are there. Oh yeah. But we're figuring some pieces out, yeah. right? Like the last thing we want to do is say, we've got this dream to have 17 campuses by 2037. And so we're going to do this. We're going to push it forward. What we're going to say is, hey, we got a hunch. We yes. believe in these holy hunches or prophetic promptings. Yeah, I'll stop that. No, but but we believe that, that we, we're, we're going to lean into something we think might be true. And then we're going to say, hey, uh, it's just wise for us to say, is that a felt need? <laughs> and if it's not a felt need, cool. We're not trying to make it that, but we got a hunch that it might be. Mm-hmm. We did that with a pop-up in Republic and yep. turned out like, man, it seemed like to be a felt need. There were yep. people there, they responded. And then we did the uh, campus, which is set up teardown. And it's been going, um, getting on a year and a half now. And man, we're seeing some great things there. And we know that this is um, this is uh, a long-term investment into this community. And so now we're looking for a long-term lease, meaning let's find a place where we could uh, we can have a uh, throughout the week presence, um, be able to utilize the energies more than putting on a service, but in reaching in a community um, that it takes. And so, uh, and then uh, eventually that probably leads leads financially, uh, it makes a smart move down the road to say, hey, now let's find a place to buy. So that's, that's right. kind of the the, right. the normal direction is uh, pop up, set up, tear down, lease, buy. All I have to say is we're hoping this year that uh, we run into an opportunity uh, to have a uh, semi-permanent location in the Republic area. So oh, that's exciting, if, if you're there and you know of Ooh. one, uh, you know, we've got all the, the dimensions and thoughts that we feel like uh, would be a deal. So uh, talk to Will or the team there or hit us here at Riff headquarters. Uh, and we would love to uh, Riff HQ is what have I all of our it. team look at it oh, and elevate it. Uh, team, you good with that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, sounds like they're great with it. So, <laughs> so listen, if, if you've got um, 10 to 15,000 square feet, right? Yes, yeah. that's what we're looking for. So if you have ten to fifteen thousand square feet, two no to three hundred people in an auditorium that we can either create an auditorium that can uh-huh. fit that. Yep. Parking spaces about a hundred, probably minimally, is that's ideal. Right. Free riff sponsorship to anyone who provides it. Whoa, 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 whoa! I think we should talk no, about I, that. I, I felt bold. I felt a holy hunch. I should say it. Was that a prophetic prompting? Was a prophetic prompting. Oh. Free riff sponsorship. I don't know if you heard that right. But this this podcast would wear a t shirt from their business. I would wear a t shirt from their business. Yep. I could. I would even do a tattoo. It would hide in all these. Okay. Wow. I, I know. I know. And three. I don't know. I heard that we have a listener in Kentucky. So not only yeah. will you have influence here. Yeah. But you know what? My new hope is that someone would open a Chuck E. Cheese uh-huh. in Republic. Okay. Not make it a Chuck E. Cheese, but now donate that uh, uh-huh, opportunity uh-huh. to uh, the Republic campus, and then you get a Chuck E. Cheese tattoo for the rest of your wow. life. Wow! Yeah, that's what I. I hope. don't know if I can hide that one. Yeah, but I'm in. Hey, we don't have time for our content yeah, today. No, but it's, me, been, <laughs> it's been a great time. <laughs> hey, what I wanted to do, I want to talk about um, the theology of heaven. Right, <laughs> shifting gears, shifting gears, <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese tats. <laughs> to um, the theology of heaven. And, and honestly, that was a good lead in because what I want to say is God's going to mark you in such a way. I'm just kidding. Okay, but let's talk, let's talk about the theology of heaven. Now, um, when we talk about theology of heaven, I've seen movies about a seven-year-old boy who apparently went there and then tells us about it and um, inspirational, right? Um, that's not where I base my theology on heaven. Um, uh, people would say, do we have a biblical theology of heaven? And I'm like, well, I mean, I hope it's not anti-biblical. I just don't think the Bible's a heaven handbook, okay? Like, mm-hmm. like it, there are things that Jesus talks about heaven, but like, like, for example, um, uh, it's hard for us to even understand what part is theology, what part is helping people understand an imagery. So there's all of that. For example, one of the things that we know is true about heaven is uh, he's building a mansion for us in glory, right? And even that wording 
um, is an American wording that we understand. He's be, it's going to be like cribs, cosmic cribs. It's going to be awesome, a mansion for us in heaven. And yeah, earth might suck at times, um, but there's going to be a mansion and it'll be worth it then when I see the, you know, the digs that God has for us. But when we look at the original wording, Jesus is saying to Jewish people who understood that the father's house, would they would just add on for the kid's family. And so there are many rooms, right? And so, so a father would have many rooms in his house. And what would happen is when you got betrothed, you would now as a son, you, you get betrothed to somebody or set up or arrange or however that works. It's not near as romantic as we'd like it to be. Um, you would then go and build on a house uh, or on a room, an extension typically to your father's house. When the room was done, then you would go and bring your now your fiance back and you'd have a wedding. And, and, and what he's saying is when he says in my father's house are many rooms, what he's saying is there is room for all of my children to be with me me. We translate to 21st century American civilization, even in our Bibles, some of the Bible translations takes that and says many rooms, house, the best English word for that is mansion. And we think mansion and I've got 12 bathrooms, just like Russell Wilson. Um, this is going to be awesome. You know, he has 12 bathrooms. He has more bathrooms than he has touchdowns. Let's not talk about football anymore. <laughs> but we, we think of that that deal of like, we're going to have this huge house. We're going to have a gated neighborhood. No riffraffs getting into mine. That's heaven. Heaven's everything I like about earth, but better. I can probably fly. I can have pizza and no calories. If the streets are going to be made of gold and all these things. Um, but so, so even a lot of what we think about heaven um, that we even think comes from the Bible um, isn't, isn't necessarily that. Uh, why is it important, the theology of heaven? I think a healthy theology of, hell, of heaven gives us a little bit um, more purpose here on earth. So um, I like talking about heaven. Do you think how about heaven it? a lot? What do you think? How, do you, how oh, often do you think about heaven? I go, it's a roller coaster, right? Okay. Because here, here's something else. Um, if I think about heaven, I also think about hell at times, right? So there's like yeah. this dichotomy in my mind and this like tug and pull and this whole idea of afterlife and the whole deal of like eternity. And um, and then it gets into like time, yeah. meaning like um, Rupert Spira. I don't know if you know that name. He, he's it's a, it's a trip to listen to him. And I still don't really understand what he says. But he talks about the idea of afterlife and the idea of time and how time is actually a construct of the mind to where it's not real, right? Okay. And you are actually living in eternity now. Okay. So then if you try to think of it, you can never think of like past or present as actual moments in time because there is no time. So then that gets me to thinking like afterlife. You're reminding me of a movie right now that I saw with wormholes Jurassic and Park. stuff. No, but oh, I really like that. Never movie. seen Jurassic Park. Uh, Lost World. Saying. What? You've never seen Jurassic Park? No, I've never seen an episode of Seinfeld either. Stop. I knew okay. That. I knew Let's go that. back to Rupert. So this whole idea of, of this afterlife, the, uh, there really isn't an afterlife. Meaning, there's eternity. Are you going to quote that? Are I'm not going to quote we're that. Quoting I'm the riff right there. Please, please quoting please the riff. <laughs> Have you listened to the riff? There is meaning, no afterlife. Unquote. Meaning, when Jesus is talking, he's like, the kingdom of heaven is already here. It's in your midst. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's here. Like there's, there's no like break. It's not like this before, after. It's like this continuous, um, not linear, right? It's not like this Western, like when you talk about mansions, I think when I think about heaven, I don't think, I think the linear idea of heaven is like odd to me. So that's what I think about when I think of heaven. I get really like, weirded out in my brain. Cause then I'm like, what does it even look like? What I, I know? Yeah. I think about it a lot, actually. I say <laughs> I don't, but I do. Yeah. Yeah. Have it on I'm your sitting, mind. I'm laying, I'm laying down with Lily. Um, she's getting ready to go to bed like a week ago. She's your daughter, correct? Yes. For those who might <laughs> yeah, not be familiar, just, <laughs> just helping. <laughs> Context is yeah. huge on that yeah. statement. Yeah. <laughs> Lily is my daughter. She's nine and she starts, uh, she asks crazy questions at night and she asks about heaven and she's like, Hey dad. Yeah. Asks like a couple of questions that are like, whatever. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Just go to bed. Go to bed. And she was like, Hey, I was thinking about heaven. Yeah. Is that, is that just something people make up to make you feel better? I'm like, uh, I don't, 
I don't think so. What do you think? She's like, I don't know. I don't think it is. But what if it is? Right. So that's, yeah. I think that's the question you've got to riff yeah. listeners today. Yeah. I mean, we ask that question, right? Like, what is it? What is it? This like crutch? Is it this like promise? Is it? So those are my questions to you. What is it? Man? Yeah. What is it? I mean, that's a lot. We're going to solve it um, here today. Great. We're figure that out. Awesome. Yeah, we we'll got. 13 more minutes. I can't wait. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll, we'll crush it. I um, can't wait. I do feel like um, there's there, there are a couple different ways you can look at heaven that I don't think result in a healthy now. Hmm. Um, now, well, one, just um, where I see, where I see as far as a foundational theology um, that I have that, that, that I will share, right? You know, that, that if you're around North Point for a long time, you're gonna have a message that comes within this framework um, that, that comes from this theology of heaven is an opportunity for us to be with God for all time. I do believe it's another place. Um, uh, I believe it's another time. Um, I'm not concerned about what that place looks like. I'm not even sure the Bible is that concerned with it, um, even though we have some imagery um, that's described. Um, I'm wondering why that imagery, if it's literal, cool, and there's big, you know, pearl gates and it's chiseled out of one stone, awesome. If the streets are made in gold, cool. Um, if it's an imagery of something else, great. Um, uh, I do believe that the context of uh, theology that we have this eternity is placed in the heart of man, right? And and that's from God that we have this sense of uh, forever. Um, I believe a theology of hell is very um, interesting to me as well, right? In the sense of, I don't know, I don't need there to, you know, I... I don't need there to be a hell for me to appreciate heaven, okay? Um, I know that Jesus talks about heaven. He talks about hell. He talks about it. I got to think through, okay, what's the culture? And so there's there's fascination in conversations. And if you look at Christendom over the last 2000 years, Christendom hasn't made that a tenant until fairly recently as far as, you know, the theology of hell. And so I'm wide open. I tend um, uh, to be more curious when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the eternal reward and, you know, um, but I, I do sense that there is a biblical framework for, there is a forever with God and that there is a place that has been prepared, that there is a hope on the other side of this. And some of even that kingdom conversation of kingdom is now, I believe the kingdom is now is our opportunity as uh, being a follower of Jesus to bring the values of this kingdom here and now. I think that's kingdom now. I think Jesus was kingdom now, less saying it's, first century AD, that's kingdom, but saying wherever you are, you bring kingdom with you. If you're a kingdom person, if you're a meaning, if you're a follower, if you're, if you're a reflector of the king, right? If you're, and, and it probably wouldn't use those terms nowadays because we don't use those terms of kingdom, but, but if I reflect Jesus, um, it's kingdom. But, but the, the, the biggest angle, and I think, it's, I think it's fascinating. I think there is room to wonder, uh, I, I don't think it was a tenet of the scripture to say, hey, here's what heaven is. Here's when it starts. Here's where it ends. So I think there's a lot of mystery outside of the sense of um, we know who it's for, uh, meaning uh, it's for God to be with those uh, forever in relationship. Um, it sounds invitational. <laughs> um, it sounds, it sounds uh, like a lot like the original creation. Um, it sounds like the opening of the book that we see in scripture um, is meant to be fulfilled and to be made right. And what that looks like, is it gonna be like a new heaven, new earth? Is it gonna be in a different place that's like, you know, better? I don't know. Here's what, here's what I want to hit is that kingdom now mentality. Mm. Does my theology of what might happen then and there impact now? Meaning um, if I believe that one day, you know, it says in scripture, one day there'll be no more tears, fears, sickness, death, sadness. There'll be none of that. That inherently implies that today's not that day. 
that there will be tears, fear, sickness, sadness, death here. And when I experience that, I shouldn't hold the earth's reality to the heaven's standards. Um, so when I, let's say I go through a season where I'm sick and, and we all have someone in our lives, if it's not us currently, who are sick. Um, uh, we, have, uh, we have this grief and it says in scripture, it says all of creation groans. And it doesn't say groans until this place goes to hell. It doesn't say it groans until God finishes the construction project. It says groan saying this isn't right. And heaven for creation in this verse is when God makes things right. That's heaven. Heaven is when God says this thing that causes the gap is no more. The sin, this time, this um, uh, sickness, one day, this isn't, this isn't what God created it to be. And one day it'll be back to the way he created it to be. Um, uh, and, and until then we're gonna be reminded and have this groan of, man, this is not right. It's not just, it's not, it's not the way God intended. So I believe that if we have a healthy theology that there is a day where God makes things right, it allows me to be hope filled even if that day isn't now. How does it help you? How does it help you be hope filled, but not have like an escapist mentality? Yeah. To where it is like, a, oh, one day, I'll just get out of here. But yeah. man, one day it's going to be awesome. Right. Because I mean, I think that there is still, again, the whole kingdom here mentality, like there's beauty and there's like there's resurrection power here now. Right. Yeah. Even though this might not yeah. be heaven and right. it is filled with a lot of, what you would call in the negative column. How do you, how do you, how do you, like, yeah. how do you go between that? I, th I think that's a, a natural, sh a natural tendency for those who have a, have a, um, I don't want to say healthy. Let me say strong, a strong theology of heaven, meaning a firm theology of heaven. A natural tendency is to be escapist mm -hmm. is to be like, wow. You know, I can't wait till God separates the sheep from the goats and I clearly am a sheep and, um, and then uh, it'll be awesome, right? Um, and what happens is you become a safe house. Like, ugh, man, we survived another week in this hell hole, mm -hmm. right? And God, why will you delay your return? Um, that's an extreme version. I rarely meet people who are that extreme, but it sneaks in, sneaks in and saying, okay, my calendar is filled with just... Uh, Christian cultural things. Um, my conversation implies that everything of good is one day then and there. So I think mission is the difference. I think mission is what keeps you from being an escapist. Mm -hmm. Jesus often talked about heaven. Jesus talked about heaven almost as much as anything else. Now, again, it's a helpful, curious study to, to figure out what was he talking about, right? How much of that was talking about a there and then, but he does seem to talk often about a there and then. Um, and he also wasn't distracted by the here and now. And so because somehow what he believed about God making things right, kept him busy on the mission and not judgmental, and not escapist, but saying, what can I do today to impact the kingdom being brought here? And so I think that has to be, the mission is what keeps us not being escapist. The mission is what keeps you from being arrogant. The mission is what keeps you from not having influence. And so every time as a church, we need to think about, are we getting out of the walls? Are we getting involved? Are we loving people? Are we bringing kingdom values to this place, right? Are we, are we what, what are the biggest needs and the pains and the aches and the tears of our community? How are we addressing that? And so we can't just say, well, yeah, I know it sucks now, but if you get your hearts to Jesus Christ, then you won't have tears one day. What we can say is, okay, man, we want to groan with creation. I'm so sorry that that is wrong. I'm so sorry you're experiencing that gap, that injustice, that whatever that might be. How can I help? But in the meantime, my hope of my hope of God, my theology of God does not not depend on God making earth look more like heaven. My, my, uh, the character of God is not on trial based on the health of Jeremy. Mm. I'm just saying that. 
And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I have to believe that no matter what hell I experience right now doesn't negate a heaven that God has. And it is not an excuse for me to say, I'm not going to get involved. It's not an excuse for me to be arrogant and confident about what it's going to look like, who's going to get there and who's not going to get there. It is this wild curiosity that I think we'll all need a tour. Okay, <laughs> it's a place. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm curious. What? Yeah. What? We'll be surprised at what it is, what it is. We'll be surprised at who's there, who's not. I'm, I, I just, who knows? And the wild mystery and the scandalous nature of God's grace. I'm just telling you, we'll all need a tour. That's <laughs> awesome. That's a bumper sticker right there. It be. <laughs> I mean, because we don't have it figured out. We don't know. Yeah. We'll be like, what? <laughs> And um, I mean, I mean, we can go so many ways. Who goes there? Here's what we know in scripture. Here's, here's, what, here's what we know. Here's what, I, here's what my perception of scripture is, um, is no one goes to the father except through Jesus Christ, okay? Now, my understanding of that is you gotta figure it out right now. I, my recommendation is figure it out right now. I believe the best day to figure out eternity is before you get there. That's, that's my perspective, all right? That's what I get from scripture. At the same time, and I'm going to have that urgency. I'm going to have that uh, that passion, that drive, that mission. What can I do to give everybody else an opportunity to think about eternity before they get there? That's what drives me. That's what drives my communication. That's what drives our programming. That's what drives. That's uh, and, and my thought is: let me live in such a way where it makes an eternal invitation attractive. At the same time, I'm like, God's way bigger than me. God's way bigger than my understanding. I don't know how to works. I don't know how it all works. Um, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever does not believe in him, uh, whoever believes in him will not perish is the word. Mm -hmm. Perish is what we call a canned food that ceases to be in existence at one point. And so the most famous verse in Christianity isn't a hallmark for an eternity in hell, okay? Um, does that mean there's not an eternity in hell? No, of course, I'm not gonna preach. Um, I'm not gonna preach with confidence what it is. Right. Because I don't think that's what the, the here's the point. The point is this, is, um, is God wants us to bring kingdom values now, everywhere we go. I do believe, I have confidence that there's a, another place, another time, um, where we will see things as if they were as they were created to be. I do believe there's a place that there won't be tears, fear, sadness, sickness, death. I do believe there's a place um, where uh, it, it doesn't end in death. I do believe um, uh, I, I do believe there will be a place where there's room, many rooms, more rooms than we can imagine that God has prepared for those. I don't believe I'm gonna have a mansion. I don't believe that it is um, for the elite. I don't believe that I need to sacrifice my time here because I'm so preoccupied with what my time will be there. Um, the only reason why I'm here is to bring kingdom to those around me. And so um, I would rather be obsessed with how I bring kingdom here than obsessed with what my kingdom there looks like. Mm -hmm. So um, now, and what I'm saying is I do believe attorney is important. And, and, and if you pay attention in our messages, I, you're gonna probably hear me have this urgency and um, you're, you're gonna sense this, this belief of, man, I believe there is a then and there. I believe that there is an urgency to our decision now, um, but I hope it all boils down to, does it help? So that when you're having the conversation with your daughters mm -hmm. and your sons and, and people at work, you're able to say, I don't know. I think that's a phenomenal answer. Say, so here's what I hope. Here's what I tend to think based on the nature of God, based on what we best understand of scripture. But man, isn't it a mystery? Here's what we know isn't a mystery. It's our mission. It's our role. It's our purpose, right? So how does this impact how we treat people at school tomorrow? Now that's not a mystery, right? And um, I think there's gonna be a lot of fun surprises for those who live in mystery and a lot of painful disappointment for those who live in certainty. <laughs> so I, yeah, I would invite North Pointers, be curious, 
be open heart, open minded, and and again, that's not that's not a um, that's not ignoring scripture. Matter of fact, I think well, it's actually diving into scripture. I was, was going to say, I mean, I, you look at Jesus, you look at Paul, and then you look at John of Patmos. I, I think that all three of them have a different view of heaven. I mean, literally, John of Patmos, Revelation, yeah. right? New heaven, new earth, all of this. Paul talking about some type of. That's where we kind of get the idea of like this rapture meeting type of deal, dead coming, Jesus on the cross. Today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Yeah. So there's like three different, and you can, we can do like systematic theology and you can make it all meet up. But honestly, like it's three different pieces. So even in that, it's like this, and that's where I get messed up, right? Yeah. I think that you, I think this is so helpful because, I mean, it's kind of back to what it was last week to where it's like, what is it really trying to say? Right, because yeah. I'm going to get messed up trying to like, okay, well, how do these link up? How do I make sure that this is here, this is here, this is here, this is here? Is it really real? Right, right. I go back to my conversation with Lily, and it ended this way. I don't want to cry. What is going to happen? I'm like, gosh. So when she was a little bit littler, we're driving down the road, and out of nowhere, she <laughs> she says, "How did I get here?" Ooh, and I'm like, you mean like in the car? Like, like what do you mean? And she's like, talking about a Beach Boys concert. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, how, how am I here? Hmm. I brought that back up to her yeah. when, we're, when we're laying there. And I said, babe, I don't, I don't know what heaven is really. I, I haven't, I don't think I've been there. Right. But I know I wasn't anxious before I was here yeah. and you weren't either. And also it was pretty cool to realize that you were here. And she's like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I think it'll be the same with heaven. Yeah. I think it's going to be like, I don't know how I'm here, Yeah, but I'm glad I am. Right? Like, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, this is helpful. This is yeah. super helpful. Yeah. Uh, man, um, I, I do feel like um, I, I want to pastor a church that's filled with people who we push down arrogance. Mm. We open up scripture. Like, I, I want to, let's open up scripture. Let's dive in. What, what did it originally mean? And that will help us. And what we know to be certain is that we have, we have a mission. And if we live on mission now, um, uh, one, if there is a then and there, and it must be determined uh, here and now uh, uh, to have our reservation in, then it, it certainly uh, would drive us to have an impact on those around us. Um, if it's different than that, then this is pretty important what we're doing now, right? So either way, no matter where you're at in this journey, it let's be missional. And I also would encourage you, let's be very curious about our own, our own journey and saying, God, man, wh wh where's my biggest disappointments in my life right now? Where's my biggest feeling like this isn't right? And uh, it, what I really want to communicate is for those who might be a sickness, might be um, um, feeling discarded, is pain and loneliness is not unique to you. And it doesn't mean it's not important. But Jesus experienced it as well. Mm -hmm. And in those moments that we can have a sense of hope that God will make it all right. He might not make it all right now. Right. He'll make it all right. Yeah. And so trust timeline, trust that to him. In the meantime, be be wildly curious. Sometimes our fear leads us to have to close the issue and leads yeah. us to certainty. Yeah. So it's out of fear, like you better decide now. Fear's a terrible long-term motivator. It's an effective short-term motivator, right? So we're not gonna preach fear. And I don't think we should do that to our kids. Um, and, and, and another powerful short-term motivator is shame. And those have been sometimes the, num the top two motivators to convince people on a theology of heaven. Fear and shame. Think of all the productions that used to go on in the 80s and 90s in the church world that might still go on. I don't know. But like, you might die tonight um, or you're so bad and Jesus is crying tears because of you right now. These vibes, fear and shame, they're effective to get people to make a decision today. I don't think they're effective to help people live on mission tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so we got to go bigger than that and say, uh, embrace curiosity, um, dive into scripture and uh, and get a hold of mission. So it's fun. There's a lot we can talk yeah. about. I think, I mean, last question I have, I know we're out of time, yeah. but what what do you think happens at Beach Boys concerts? 
Yeah, no, world, that's, that's good. I was hoping <laughs> yeah. once I said that, I was like, you weren't picking up what I was catching. No, I mean, I like, caught it, but I don't, I don't I think that's like, where. I, maybe, I didn't, maybe no, no one will notice that. It's just not I always I, think when she said, how did I get here? Right, I wasn't even I know going that, to the biological aspect yeah, of it. Yeah, well, see, I that's where. I think she was more in the spiritual realm, but yeah, no, no. Yeah, see, And we'll get to it. I'll explain to her. You zigged I Right. You zigged I And I'll get to that part with her someday, right? But just. Yeah. Yeah, I went. I went more of the heaven route. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe right. we drop a link of your favorite yeah. Beach Boys song <laughs> in the show notes. But <laughs> hey, we are out of time. And um, hey, uh, so hey, let us know if uh, you do want to uh, be the, the person who submits Justin's tattoo oh, with that I sponsorship. Can't wait. I can't and uh, wait. Happy New Year. We're starting a brand new series next week called Happy Nude Year. <laughs> Talking about stripping away the things that don't need to be in our faith. That is just <laughs> Is that what we landed on? That is clever. It is clever. Happy New Year. If not clever, it's classy. Very classy. Very classy. (laughs) All right. Have a great one. See you at 1030 Sunday. If it's Springfield Nixa, you guys know that by now. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Riff. We'll have a brand new episode every week, wherever you find podcasts.